The day that he left me was the day that I died, but I was reborn as a witch. Hello and welcome back to my channel. This year, for spooky season, every Wednesday I'm going to do a video about a different witch. Witch Wednesdays if you will, and we're going to do our makeup like them, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about whatever movie they're in, um, so the unfortunate thing about that is I tried to pick witches where I really like their makeup, uh, so that leaves out the Owen sisters because their makeup is just normal, <laughs> so I needed to pick women who have cooler, more interesting makeup, so the one that we're going to start out with is Elaine Parks. Elaine Parks is the main character in the movie The Love Witch. If you haven't seen this movie, I quite like it. It's not like a mainstream movie the way the other ones we're going to do this month are. This one is definitely more of an artsy movie. So unless you're into those sort of artsy vibe movies, you probably won't like this. It's definitely not for everyone, uh, but I quite like it. The movie itself is shot in a very like 1960s feel. I mean, it only came out in the last decade or so, but from the style to the way it's shot to the way they do close-ups and little like music things, like everything about this movie is supposed to feel a little bit... Um, 60s type deal, you know what I mean? Um, and that sort of, I think, adds to its charm. It feels very whimsical in that sense. So unlike a lot of other movie witches who I love completely and unconditionally, like the Owen sisters, I struggle with Elaine because she's not a reliable narrator, which is fine, but a lot of Elaine's problem to me is she's very... She's very rash. She really jumps into things and doesn't really pay attention to, to the carnage which is left behind her, which is fine. I mean, not every character has to be calculated and all of that, but... Okay, so I'll tell you a little bit about the movie, and then you'll understand my problems with Elaine. So, the movie starts with Elaine moving from, I don't know, one section of California to another, uh, because her ex-husband died tragically. <laughs> in what we, the audience, are led to believe has been some kind of poisoning on Elaine's part. This is one of my problems with Elaine's, is she never really owns up to or admits the level of involvement she has with all of these deaths. I mean, usually, typically, I like female characters who are, who are like, a little more open better. They're like, yeah, I killed this guy, and... Um, whereas Elaine, we never really quite get that. We're always kind of left this with this feeling that she never really feels at fault for these things that happen, and I don't... I don't know, I just feel like, own up to your shit, you know? So anyway, so she moves into this apartment that one of her, like, one of the women who got her into being a witch after her divorce, um, kind of sublet to her, if you will. And we meet Trish, who, Trish will be important later, but Trish, um, is an interior designer, and she shows Elaine around the apartment, and then they go out for lunch together. This scene, I think, is really important where they're having lunch because we sort of get this really harsh contrast between Elaine and Trish because Trish is very much so a modern woman. You sound as if you've been brainwashed by the patriarchy. Your whole self-worth is wrapped up in pleasing a man. Honestly, I feel, think I would love her if I met her in real life. Whereas Elaine, um, everything she says is about her purpose in life being to find a man and to please a man and... That's where we get that TikTok audio that you probably heard. The day he left me was the day that I died. But then I was reborn as a witch. Elaine goes back to her apartment, which is decorated very witchy. I think there's boobs all over the wall and everything, too. By the way, this is definitely not a family movie. There are There's so much nudity in this movie. <laughs> there's so much nudity. Um, and she does kind of like a little witchy ritual to try to attract a dude. And one of the things I do like about this movie is that at least the witchcraft in it is very... I don't want to say, yeah, I guess I could say realistic. It's a lot of just her mixing herbs and that sort of thing. It's not like Sanderson sister type wave a magic wand deal. It's more like her mixing herbs and drinking stuff and putting them in pies and that sort of thing. That That's more her witchcraft. So it's quite interesting. So then when she goes out um, of the house the next day, she sees this guy, Wayne. She thinks he's cute. She attracts him, she uses her beauty to allure him, and then he takes her to his little, like, cabin in the woods type situation. They do a little hanky-panky, and she drugs him. She puts, she gives him a mix of 
hallucinogenic herbs and whatnot, and he takes it, and essentially, I believe, there's a lot of things that are sort of up to, up to interpretation in this movie, but I believe his body kind of has an adverse reaction to said hallucinogenic herbs, and he dies. And she takes him out back behind his cabin and bur buries him in the garden. The next man that Elaine ends up with is where she kind of loses me because it is Trish's husband, Richard. Trish goes away on like a trip, uh, an interior design conference, that's what it is. And Elaine decides to take that opportunity to seduce her husband. I don't know, man, that's where she loses me. I just can't vibe with that. Like, maybe you and Trish aren't the best of friends at this point, but like, she was so nice to you, you guys. She was so nice to you. Like, what happened to sisterhood? I don't know, man. Kill as many dudes as you want, but Trisha's husband? That just feels gross to me. Side note, I actually bought this Nordina palette um, in, like, February for this video because this is the closest blue I could find to the one that um, Elaine wears. Now, from far away in the movie, her eyeshadow looks matte, and then when they do, like, really intense close-ups, it looks sparkly. So, I think they probably just use a sparkly one for, for the close-ups and a matte one for the far away. So, we're doing matte, but I literally bought this eyeshadow palette for this video. So, anyway, she, should, she seduces Richard, decides she doesn't like him anymore, so then she essentially just ghosts him. So, this one isn't really her fault, but he's so distraught about her ghosting him that he unalives himself, and it's very sad. And it makes me not like Elaine, to be honest with you. We get little bits here and there about how maybe her original husband Jerry wasn't the best dude to her. Well, you know, we hear little, like, voiceover things of complaining about her not keeping the house clean enough, and... But the thing is, like, Elaine isn't the best narrator, so... I don't know, there's a lot of things about her that I just innately don't trust, which is what makes her interesting. Anyway, after Richard dies, Elaine and Trish go out for lunch again, and, uh, Elaine can't stop talking about this new guy that she found, even though, uh, Trisha's husband has just died. <laughs> so maybe don't talk about yourself for five seconds. Um, and Elaine accidentally leaves a ring that this man gave her with Trish, and so Trish goes to drop it off at Elaine's apartment, somehow gets there before her, tries on all of Elaine's clothes and puts on her makeup, which is a little bit weird, but okay. Um, and then that's when Trish kind of finds Elaine's shrine to these men that she's killed and her voodoo dolls and that sort of thing and she realizes that Richard is among them and that's when she kind of finds out that uh <laughs> Elaine might not might not be the greatest okay I can't breathe while I'm doing uh liquid liner so just give me one sec and I'll just come back with the liner done okay so Elaine's last guy in the movie his name is Griff she he um He's a police officer, and Elaine kind of decides that he's the one, uh, because she feels like she's seen him somewhere before. Spoiler alert, he pulled her over in the beginning of the movie. Uh, that's where she's seen him before. And the interesting thing about Griff is, unlike her other dudes that she's been with in this movie, Griff isn't looking for a woman, in that sense. You know what I mean? He's not interested, and he doesn't think. He's kind of a mass misogynist, if we're being honest. Judging by his inner monologue, he's not... The, the greatest guy, but at least his strong sense of self kind of makes him immune to a lot of Elaine's powers. So when they're at the burlesque bar that the witches perform at, um, and they're kind of confronting each other, and he's also the cop investigating Wayne's murder, this is where it kind of gets a little muddy to me, because Elaine clearly knows that she has, she's semi-responsible for, like, Wayne's death and all that, but Griff is like, I'm gonna have her take you in, and she's like, for what? burying a lover according to my religion and it's like well yeah <laughs> you buried a body like I don't I don't think you can just do that like I'm pretty sure that is a chargeable offense like she seems very certain that there's nothing he can do about what she did to Wayne and I'm fairly certain there is Editing Abby jumping in really quickly because I thought I said this here and I guess I didn't but it is also during this scene in the bar that we get kind of like Elaine's motivation like for her you know she says that men have always treated her like she's just a body so for her becoming a master of love and sex magic it was kind of her turning the tables and kind of using her body for her own advantage instead which I think is great and I think that's totally a thing that you can like reclaim something that's used against you and use it for your own benefit for sure but I mean I still can't forgive her for Trisha's husband 
Like, come on. I understand using men's weaknesses for your own gain, blah, blah, blah. Like, from a movie standpoint, I think it all works great. But does she really have to go for Trisha's husband? That, I get stuck on that. I get stuck there, and I can't forgive her. But anyway, the people at the bar, like, the bar patrons are very anti-witch. So they start freaking out, and he takes her into the car to try to, like, protect her. They go back to her place, and she stabs him in the chest. That is sort of her first act of actual, like, outright violence. Every other dude she's killed up to there, it's been, like, poisoning or whatever, but she literally stabs Griff in the chest. And to me, I don't know, like, that represents Elaine's final, like, final shred of sanity going away. Like, I think in that moment where she stabs Griff in the chest, like, she's finally insane at that point. She's smiling, she's covered in blood, she's killed him, and then the movie's over. I don't... That's what I think. I think the movie kind of represents... Her slow descent into, like, genuine absolute madness. But I don't know. If you've seen The Love Witch, I'd love to get your interpretation, your thoughts, because there's not a lot about it that I can find on the internet. <laughs> and it's on Shudder sometimes, but sometimes it, they take it away. Overall, like, it is one of the few movies that I've seen in my lifetime to have witchcraft in the more traditional sense with, like, herbs and stuff. And, you know, that part of it, I think, is really quite cool, but... I don't know. Really, the part about Elaine that gets me is when she goes for Trisha's husband. Like, there are so many fish in the sea. I get it that Trish was talking him up and talking about how great he is, blah, 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 but, like, I don't know. I just really don't like that. Check with blue. Just, like, a little bit of blue under my eyes, too. So, because Elaine's makeup really has that sort of 1960s type feel, her lips are very pink. I don't even think I own anything pink enough. So we're going to try this MAC lipstick. It's called Cosmo. Oh, you're much browner than I remembered you to be. Hmm. You're not pink enough. Hold on, let me try again. So this is a MAC lipstick that they did, I think, for International Lipstick Day one year. It's called Flora Bundy. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Alright, so this is the completed Love Witch inspired makeup look. It is quite similar to the sort of makeup that Elaine wears throughout the movie. Um, the sort of same sort of bl bright blue eyeshadow, uh, pink lips, that sort of thing. Very, very her style, but also very my style. Like, I would wear my makeup like this too. I don't usually go for eyeshadow this bright, but like I would. I don't have a problem with it. Anyway, let me know if you've seen The Love Witch. Let me know if you liked it. Like I said, definitely not a movie for everyone. A little more artsy than I usually go, um, and a lot of nudity, which usually I don't watch movies with lots of nudity because I am a small old lady. Uh, but I do quite like this one anyway. I think, honestly, if you put a witch in a movie, I'm going to like it regardless. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let me know what you thought of this video in the comment section below. Uh, thank you so much for watching this first Witch Wednesday, and I'll see you next week. Bye!